Okay, we'll go ahead and get started now. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the employee engagement training session. I'm Marissa De La Rosa, and I'm a consultant on the employee engagement team in leadership and talent development. I'm joined on the webinar today by Brandon Sullivan, Jennifer Engler, Chelsea Dunkel, and Terry Spillers as well. While you'll primarily hear from me, they'll be available to help answer questions at the end. During our time today, we're going to cover a lot, of a lot of information related to your employee engagement data. Some of it may be familiar to you if you've received reports in the past. However, some of the information is definitely new because we have a new online portal that we'll be using to access our data this year. We have the ability to access all of the same data that we've had in years past, and we'll have some new features as well. So let's start with accessing the online data portal. On approximately January 4, senior leaders and HR leads will receive an email from Corn Ferry The Hay Group with access instructions for logging into the online data portal. At the end of January, tentatively the 29th, a similar email will be sent to all managers who had at least five responses from direct or indirect reports. Also note that you'll be required to change your password when you log in for the first time. Passwords must be at least eight characters and include at least one capital letter and one number. Keep that in mind uh, because those password requirements won't be indi indicated on the login screen. Please contact ee2 at umn.edu if you're unable to log into the portal. One big change this year is that we have six different hierarchies. Faculty and staff receive different versions of the survey. Plus, direct reports are separated from indirect or roll-up reports. So, one hierarchy is called faculty direct, which contains faculty that report directly to a particular manager. Then there's faculty all, which include all faculty, direct and indirect, that roll up to a manager. There's also a faculty special reports hierarchy that contains any faculty shadow hierarchy reports. Shadow hierarchy reports don't follow a reports to structure from the HRMS system. In other words, they break the hierarchy. We then have the same structure for staff results. There's a staff direct hierarchy, which includes one direct reports to, or which includes, sorry, only direct reports to a particular manager. There's staff all, which includes all staff direct and indirect reports that roll up to a manager. And finally, staff special reports, which includes any staff shadow hierarchy reports requested by your unit. Note that you'll only have access to the hierarchies that are applicable for you. To give you an example of how this works, let's look at LTD. Brandon Sullivan has five direct reports, and they are Jennifer Engler, Rosie Berry, Olga Alapova, Christina McGuire, and Donna Sathoff. Assuming they all took the survey, their responses would be included in the staff direct hierarchy. Some of Brandon's direct reports also have people reporting to them. Their responses, in addition to his direct reports, are included in the staff all hierarchy. So the full LTD team rolling up to Brandon is included in staff all. Once you log in, this is where you'll select which hierarchy you'd like to view. If you only have access to one hierarchy, you'll be brought directly to the welcome page. Transitioning to other hierarchies will be pertinent for higher level, higher level leaders as well as HR leads. We'll show you how to transition between hierarchies later in this webinar. Today, we'll be looking at the staff all hierarchy. The welcome page is the landing page once you log into the portal. From the Help option on the top menu bar, you can link to the website we, re we referenced earlier that has uh, for navigating this data, data portal, including short videos and printable guides. Again, we'll provide that URL at the end of this webinar. Note that the name of the hierarchy you are in will appear on the top right side of the banner in the Welcome page. Also, please note that our access to the online data portal ends on December 14 of 2018. That's listed further down the page. You'll have the ability to export all of your data from this system, and we'll go over that in detail in just a bit. You'll see University of Minnesota system displaying in the top left corner of the banner below the word welcome. 
It always defaults to the highest level of access the user has in that specific hierarchy. So you can see that I have access at the system level. We'll cover navigating the hierarchies in more detail in a moment. For now, let's walk through all of the options in the lower menu bar, the gray bar. I'm just going to go through what you, can, uh, what you can do with each of these menu options right now. We'll cover most of them in more detail throughout the training today. Also, there's a top menu bar that we'll look at later as well. First, there's the welcome menu. That brings you back to the welcome page when you're somewhere else in the system. Dashboard allows quick access to specific survey results. Key metrics reviews data related to our two key metrics of commitment and dedication and effective environment. Explore results. This is where you can review all of the detailed results. Comments is where you can access comment reports. Respondents is where you can view response rates. We'll start there by clicking on respondents in the menu. The default view is a pie chart that shows the overall response rate for your area. It indicates the percentage of people who completed the survey, as well as those who did not complete it. Today we'll be using LTD as an example. I'll click to navigate to Kathy Brown, the VP of OHR, and then Brandon Sullivan, the Director of LTD. Also, please note that we're looking at demo data today. So I'm going to use the arrow in the top left to navigate to other levels in the hierarchy. Note that managers will have access to the results of their direct or indirect reports. We're looking at indirect in this case because we're in the staff all hierarchy. HR leads and higher level, level managers will have access to many different levels of the hierarchy. So I'm clicking University Finance and Operations, navigating through here and now Office of Human Resources. Notice that the leader's internet ID is included as the org code, or organizational code. Previously, the org code was a system-generated five-digit number assigned by the vendor to help locate reports. We decided to use the internet ID so it was familiar to us and had meaning. It also helps you keep track of where you're at in the hierarchy if the manager name isn't included in the report name. You'll see that Brandon's direct reports are showing in the hierarchy list, even though they do not have five reports or any survey results. For instance, Barry023 refers to Rosie Barry, but she does not have survey results, so we're only seeing her internet ID. Let's go back to select Leadership and Talent Development. Now that I've made my manager selection, notice that the heading in the banner has changed. It will show the report name and the manager's internet ID. The pie chart is showing the overall response rate for LTD. Click by group to view more details. In this view, we can see the internet IDs for Brandon's direct reports who are managers. Again, Barry023 is Rosie Barry, ENGLE009 is Jennifer Engler, O Alapova is Olga Alapova. You can see the number of people reporting to each of them. Because there are fewer than five, there are no survey results. And just as a reminder, for a person to receive the survey, they needed to be benefits eligible and active in HRMS as of September 7 of 2017. Now let's take a look at the dashboard. You can go here for a quick view of key data, including response rates, key metrics, strengths and opportunities, and the employee engagement profile. Note that if you click more, you'll get more details about that item. Let's start by looking at the engagement profile. This will appear for you as long as at least five people are in at least one of the four categories. If there are fewer than five people in each category, then you'll just see dashes in each of the quadrants. Each quadrant shows the percentage of people who fall into that particular category. The engaged quadrant includes respondents who scored higher on commitment and dedication and effective environment. Frustrated includes respondents who scored higher on commitment and dedication and lower on effective environment. Detached represents people who scored lower on commitment and dedication and higher on effective environment. And disengaged includes people who scored lower on both commitment and dedication 
and effective environment. Clicking More allows you to see the engagement profile results in more detail. In this view, you not only see the unit's engagement profile information from 2014 and 2015, but you also see a comparison against the benchmarks. I'll elaborate on those benchmarks in a bit. So I just showed you one way to get to this data. You could also get to this detailed view by clicking on Key Metrics and then Employee Engagement Profile. Let's now take a look at some more detailed survey results and view the data by key metric and driver. To see this data, we're going to click on Explore Results, and then Key Metrics and Drivers. This view will look familiar to those of you who have received engagement data in the past. It's the same view of results from previous years. So let's scroll down a bit. And here we can see that the key metrics are capitalized. They are commitment and dedication and effective environment. I'll go over each of those columns and what they represent. We'll start with percent favorable. That shows the percentage of people who answered agree or strongly agree. Percent neutral shows the percentage of people who answered neither agree nor disagree. Percent unfavorable shows the percentage of people who answered disagree or strongly disagree. Distribution shows the same information in a bar chart. Green is favorable, gray is neutral, red is unfavorable. We then move on to the percent favorable difference section, which is based on the percent, fa percent favorable for 2017. Remember, that's the percentage in the green bar. The first column is 2014 same unit results. A plus sign means the 2017 favorable results are that many percentage points higher than in 2014. A minus sign means the 2017 favorable results are that many percentage points lower than in 2014. 2015 same unit results similarly compares the 2017 favorable results against the 2015 survey results. So in total, we'll see two years of trend data. Let's scroll to the right to see a full view of 2017 benchmarks. The 2017 benchmarks are as follows. Total college unit. In this case, we're looking at the Office of Human Resources. And this shows your area scores compared to everyone who reports to the senior leader of your college or unit. This benchmark will not appear for system campuses. Total campus. This shows your area scores compared to everyone who reports to the same senior leader on your campus. For system campuses, this comparison will be at the chancellor level. For Twin Cities campus, this comparison will be for those whose senior leader reports to either Executive Vice President and Provost Hansen or Senior Vice President of Finance and Operations Burnett. This comparison will not be available for Twin Cities staff who are sen whose senior leader reports to President Kaler. In the past, this has been available, but it isn't this year, and that's because this new online data portal doesn't allow for us to separate those people who report to the president on the Twin Cities campus from those who report to the president on the system campuses. So in summary, people will have a campus comparator who report to a chancellor on a system campus or who on the Twin Cities campus report to either the senior vice president of finance and operations or the Executive Vice President and Provost. In our example, OHR reports to the Senior Vice President of Finance and Operations. And then finally, Total University System. This identifies your area scores compared to everyone in the university. Above the data, you'll see the Sort By drop-down menu, where you can sort the results in different ways by percent favorable, percent neutral, or percent unfavorable. There's also the no, no sorting option, which is the default view. There's a button called filters and comparators. And this shows the column names as total college unit, total campus, and total university. You can choose which level of comparators you'd like to view. The guide button provides definitions for the benchmarks. You can see those here. 
We'll click back. Once you've selected the comparators you'd like to filter on, click Save and Return to get back to the results. We're not going to make any changes at this point. We can also view the results in another way, by Survey Question. To do this, click Explore Results, then Question Summary. This is similar to the view we just saw, but now we're also seeing a new field called Valid N. That shows you the number of people who responded to a particular question. Respondents who may have skipped questions or answered don't know or not applicable, applicable are not counted in that question. The survey question numbers are shown on the left. Note that you may need to scroll to the right to view all of the comparators and results. Many people are curious about their unit strengths and development opportunities. To see this information, let's scroll up, and then we'll click Explore Results, and then Results Sorting Tool. It defaults to the strengths, but you can select different sorting options from the Sort by drop-down menu. Strengths are based on favorable and unfavorable scores, and compared to benchmarks. Opportunities are based on favorable, unfavorable, favorable scores and compared to benchmarks. Top 10 most favorable are based on favorable scores. Top 10 most unfavorable are based on unfavorable scores. And top 10 neutral are based on neutral scores. Notice that strengths and opportunities are calculated by an algorithm that takes the following factors into consideration. Percent favorable, percent unfavorable, and compared to benchmarks. Let's move on and discuss comments. So I'll click comments. There were two open-ended comment questions on the survey, meaning everyone had the option to provide two comments. Comment data will appear if there are at least 20 comments per question. That's to protect confidentiality. This means that if there are less than 20 comments from the team whose data you are viewing, no comments will show. Comments that are suppressed this way are rolled up to the next level in the hierarchy. In addition, the comments have been scrubbed by the vendor to eliminate names of people and departments or units, as well as titles. For most of you, the functionality around comments isn't going to be important because comments won't be available to you. However, some of you will have access to comment data, so I'm going to run through it here. This section provides several ways to analyze employees' comments and obtain further insight to the data. Remember that comments help provide context for the results you have already seen in the quantitative data. As you see here, there's nothing showing up for LTD. So let's navigate one level higher to see if there are any comments at the overall OHR level. If you click the Select Question drop-down menu, you can select the specific question that you'd like to view. For now, we'll leave it at the first question, and we'll leave that one selected, and we'll scroll down a bit. And also note that you can isolate comments by themes that were self-selected by employees using the Select Theme drop-down menu. Let's look at options available there. Again, we're going to leave the selections as is. Let's scroll down to view the sorted comments. There's a bar chart that shows the number and percentage of comments that were tagged by employees to each comment theme. The gray striped table at the bottom of the screen shows all of the comments available based on the filters that you selected. Only 10 comments are visible per screen. So you can click the Next button beneath the table to advance to the next 10 comments. Clicking on the green Excel icon above the table will export all of the available comments into an Excel file. And it will send it to you as an email. Right now it's showing that our request is in queue. Let's close this window for now. The black funnel icon opens a window that lets you further filter the comments by keyword or theme. To find comments that include a specific word or phrase, 
enter a percent sign in the box followed by the word or the phrase. The, that percent sign represents a wild card, which will search the entire comment for the word or phrase that you enter. Entering a word or phrase without the percent sign will return only comments that begin with that word or phrase. In this example, we're going to search for a comment that has 5017 in it. So I'm going to enter percent 5017. The second drop down menu allows you to filter the comments by theme. Let's leave it blank for now to get all of the comments. As you see, our results were filtered to show the comments that had 5017 in it. Let's get rid of this filter for now. The plus minus sign is used to hide columns, so you could hide the theme, for example. Let's, let's click Cancel for now. Now that we've talked about how to view your results, we need to talk about expo exporting the results out of the system so that it can be saved and shared with others. Let's navigate back to LTD in the hierarchy to export the LTD level report. I'll click the Office of Human Resources and then select LTD. And I'll click Apply. Please note that there are limits to the amount of data that you can export. You can export 20 full export packages. However, you have unlimited access for single page exports. Knowing that there are limits, we encourage you to save the data that you export. Also, we're working with the vendor to increase the export limits for HR leads who have more than 20 reports. We'll start by clicking Export. There are three export formats, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDF. These options are available under the first Export Format drop-down menu. Excel allows you to manipulate or sort the data. PowerPoint also allows for editing of headings and descriptive text. PDFs can only be edited if you have a PDF editing software, such as Adobe Acrobat DC. Note that PDF is the default format for exporting. Most of you created names for the reports during the summer. However, you may decide that you'd like to edit those names. You can do that in Excel and PowerPoint and PDF if you have editing software. Let's leave it at PDF for now. Once you select the export format, the next field you may want to edit is email recipient. That defaults to you, but you can change it or add more people to it. You just need to separate email addresses with a comma. I'm going to paste my email address here. I would recommend that you enter a comment if you're sending this to someone else because the email is fairly generic. Your comment can indicate the manager, the unit name, whether it's staff or faculty, etc. It's especially helpful to add comments if you're exporting a lot of data at one point. Next is Export Scope. Although you selected an export format at the top of the page, you still need to select the scope of the data you'll export. Here the default is PDF Full Report. Let's see what some of the other options are. Excel Full Report is a predetermined collection of data views that provides data on all key metrics, drivers, and questions. It is in Excel format, which means that you can sort, filter, and otherwise manipulate the data and create new charts if you wish. There's a limit of 20 exports for this option. PowerPoint Full Report is a predetermined collection of data views in a PowerPoint document. Headers and descriptive text can be edited in this format but charts and graphs cannot. Again, there's a limit of 20 exports for this option. PDF Full Report shows a predetermined collection of data views in a PDF document. This format most closely resembles how the Navigator site looks on your computer. But remember, you can only make edits in this format if you have the appropriate software. There's also a limit of 20 exports for this option. Keep in mind, it's a limit of 20 total full report downloads, not 20 for each of those formats that I've gone over. Export Question Summary Only is just an export of the results for all questions grouped by metric and driver. There are no limits to the number of exports you can do in this format. PowerPoint Dashboard 
is a PowerPoint file with slides that show each of the thumbnails found on the Navigator's dashboard screen. Again, there are no export limits for this option. And Current Page exports only the data from the specific hierarchy section that you're currently viewing. Once again, there are no limits to the exports of this format. Also note that there are some additional fields that can be selected in PDF and Excel formats. For example, you can specify a different orientation or paper size, or you can opt to view the results on all on one Excel spreadsheet or separated into multiple spreadsheets. Let's leave the PDF full report option selected for now. And click OK once you have all of the fields selected. It will show that it's queued, then executing, and then completed. You can close that box and then check your email for the, for the export. It can take a few minutes for that email to be generated. The email will be from Mailer and the subject is Corn Ferry Report. Let's close this window. And here we can see an example of what the email will look like that notifies you when the report is ready to view. Now I'm going to show you each of the sections of the PDF report. This should all look familiar based on what we've gone over today. So here you're looking at the respondents data or response rate data. This is a page of the employee engagement profile. This page is the employee engagement overview. This is the key metrics and drivers page. This is the questions summary page. This is what the strengths page of the results sorting tool looks like. And this is the opportunities from the results sorting tool. Here are the top 10 most favorable items from the results sorting tool. And these are the top 10 most unfavorable items from the results sorting tool. These are the top 10 neutral items from the results sorting tool. And this is what the comment section looks like. Remember, there were no comments at the LTD level, so this is blank. This is a good example of what the comment reports will look like, since most comments are only available at the senior leader level. Now, let's go back to our system demo. We've talked about some of the menu items, so now let's go over the rest. Print. This prints the page that you're on. And it looks like you're printing a web page. It's not a great format. So I would recommend exporting the data and printing it from that exported file. I'll click Print Now to show you the interface. So you can see um, this, this is a regular print uh, page that you'd get here. So I'm going to cancel out of this and continue along the menu options. We already went over the Export menu. Um, log off does just what it says. It logs you out of the portal. Preferences. This allows you to change your password. Let's take a quick look at that here. You may not need this option, so I'll cancel out of here. Re-enter report. Clears all filters and refreshes everything on the current site. And it brings you back to the highest level of the hierarchy to which you have access. So as you remember, we started with University of Minnesota System, and now we're looking at leadership and talent development. I'll click re-enter report now. Notice the hierarchy changed both in the banner and in the navigation area. The next item in the top menu is report list. If you have access to several hierarchies, clicking report list will bring you to the list of those hierarchies where you can choose which one to look at. Finally, as mentioned at the start, the help option links to the website designed with resources for navigating your report data website. We'll take a look at that now. That covers the online data portal and all of the capabilities that you have. So now we want to talk about some employee engagement resources available to you. First, there's the Navigating Your Report Data website. And this is ee.ltd.umn.edu. This site goes over the key points we discussed today. 
Note that there's a link to the online data portal on the right, so you won't always need to reference the email sent by Corn Ferry the Hay Group. There are various printable guides, quick links, and other resources available on this site. And please know that we'll be adding more information to this site that will help with data interpretation. We hope to roll that out before the data is released system-wide in January. Another great resource for you is the Supervisory Development site, which is supervising.umn.edu. If you select Module 5 and then click Start, you'll see the module content sorted on the right. I'll go over those sections now. Input. This refers to the employee responses that were collected via the university's employee engagement survey. Discussion gives you suggestions on how to share those responses and facilitate conversations about that data. And action helps you with creating and implementing an action plan to both celebrate strengths and address the areas that were identified through the survey data and discussion as most critical to advance the unit's goals and priorities. If you haven't already checked out the employee engagement module from the supervisory development course, please do review it. There's a lot of great information here. We're also going to be addressing, or, sorry, adding more resources to the Taking Action section. As for what you can expect next, emails will be sent to senior leaders and HR leads by Corn Ferry, the Hay Group, on approximately January 4, inviting them to access their data on the portal. The data will be released to all other managers who have results on approximately January 29, also via an email from Corn Ferry, the Hay Group. All managers receiving data will receive an email the week of January 22 confirming the date that they will receive the in email invitation to view their data. Again, please note that these are tentative dates. We'll let you know if the timeline changes. We will have another WebEx on February 14 of 2018 for all leaders with data to review those, these resources for navigating their data in the portal. We will also be providing additional resources for data interpretation and action planning. The invitation to this WebEx will be in the January 22 email that confirms the data release date. So that's everything that I was planning to show you, and I know that it's a lot of information. So we do have time now for questions. Um, we'll see what we can answer now, and then the rest of the questions will be added to the site in a Q&A section on the website. This is Jennifer, and we're just waiting for questions if anyone has any. So we'll pause briefly to see if there are questions from the participants. So it appears to me that there's a question about referencing the benchmark data. And I think it says, can you resummarize the benchmark data just referenced? So that's super complicated, but yes, we can. <laughs> and I'm going back to the slide so that I can kind of read it verbatim. We're going to go back to the slide because it's more helpful to look at visually. So we have two years of trend data, which we really refer to as trend. And then we have, as we've had in the past, three internal benchmarks. Uh, Marissa referenced earlier that when you hit filters and comparators up at the top right, you'll hit it, you'll see a guide that's dynamic and will translate what you're seeing for comparator. So right now for our unit comparator, which we've always always had, we in leadership and talent development are within the Office of Human Resources, so that's our unit comparator. And then our campus is the Twin Cities campus. And that's the comparator that references university finance and operations. And then we also have the comparator of where our results are compared to every other staff person in the entire University of Minnesota system. What's different this year and somewhat confusing is these names are dynamic, and that's why we will have the guide. So they won't say unit, campus, and total university. They will reference the office that your leader reports to, the highest level of senior leader for unit and then for senior leader for campus. What Marissa was explaining earlier is that for the Twin Cities campus comparator, anyone whose leader reports directly to the president won't have a Twin Cities campus comparator. If your senior leader reports to the provost or the senior vice president, then you will have a Twin Cities campus comparator. 
all system campuses will have the campus comparator as they've had in the past, but not a unit comparator because their unit is their system campus. So hopefully that helps, but we also have on the website that Marissa's referred to, ee.ltd.umn.edu, a job or a principal guide that also refers to these uh, comparators. But please, we will at the end of this webinar send an evaluation. Please put forward anything that's still confusing or that reference resources or references that would be helpful in that um, evaluation, as well as always feel free to email us at ee2 at umn.edu with any questions. Are there other questions? Chelsea's going to answer the next question that she sees. So the question is asking if action plans will be available through the portal this year, and are we able to show you that? Um, this year, action plans will be available on the supervisory development website in module five, taking action. They are not there just yet, um, but our hope is to have them available to you by January 4th when we release the data. So the next question is, would you go back one slide so we could see the schedule? And I think that that's the slide, what's next? I believe that's what you're referencing is that timeline that is still tentative, but for the most part, we're planning on it, which is to release data to senior leaders and HR leads on January 4th. And then on the 29th, everyone system-wide who's eligible to receive data will receive an email from the vendor uh, accessing their data on the 29th. Again, if that changes, uh, we'll let folks know, but that's the plan. And then the webinar on the 14th will be very much the same content covered today with additional resources around the action planning that Chelsea just referenced. Um, templates for creating action plans, as well as um, uh, suggestions for how to take action that currently are already on module five of employee engagement on the supervisory development website, but we're going to be adding more resources there. So there are resources in that module, but again, adding more um, in early January. Great questions. Any more questions? Who is considered a senior leader for purposes of the report? Great question. So most of the senior leaders are all of the chancellors of the system campuses, all of the deans of the academic units on the Twin Cities campus, um, the president, the provost, vice presidents, senior vice president, and I'm not sure I'm missing anyone else. Um, audits, goes up in finance kind of. Uh, I think that's about it. On the, well, yeah, that's about it. If you have a specific question about a particular um, senior leader, uh, please email us at ee2 at umn.edu. But I think I've covered most of them. Uh, the Office of Undergraduate Education would be the Vice Provost Bob McMaster. So the data at those levels, but the those senior leaders will have access to the data for their entire organization. Other questions? Um, so the in terms of the HR leads or other designated uh, staff, um, chief of staff, assistant to other HR staff and units who could also get access to this data on January 4th, we absolutely will um, provide access to whoever the HR lead designates to have access. So um, feel free to work through your HR lead to let us know who should have access. We hope to finalize that file for our vendor by the first part of next week. So if you could give us that information, and you can email Jennifer Engler or Marissa De La Rosa directly with those requests for access um, beyond the senior leader and the HR lead for January 4th uh, uh, invitations to go out. Generally speaking, we're gonna be providing the same people with access who've, who've had access to the hierarchy or the response rates in the past. Um, but if 
that's not accurate in that you need to limit it or extend it further, just please let us know. Question, will managers be able to share access to the results with their HR liaisons or whoever, whomever they choose, or how do we suggest you guide managers? Um, so I think I understand this question. Um, if I don't, please chat us back or pose the question again. We uh, leaders, we consider leaders to own their own data. So a senior leader would have access to everybody who rolls up to them, but a particular leader. So let's use Brandon as the example of leadership and talent development. Um, he would have access um, to his own data and Kathy Brown, the vice president of OHR would have access to his data, but he will not be able to give anyone else that data unless he chooses to do so. So one of his peers on the senior leadership team, he would have to share that data himself. Um, he would have access, if I were to get a report to my data, I'm not getting a report, so that doesn't really apply. But otherwise, managers need to share the data themselves if they want to share it with somebody um, in HR or with a peer or, or somebody else, if that is how the question um, is intended. So managers don't need to share their data with anyone unless they so choose, but senior leaders and HR leads tend to have data across the entire organization. I hope that helps, but like I said, please re-post the question for clarification if you missed it. Uh, I think I'm seeing a new question. John, this is a new question. As a high-level summary, are we more engaged or less engaged than 2015? I wish I could say. I wish I knew for certain we're not having our data presentation from the vendor um, until closer to January 4th when we're able to roll out the data system-wide so we don't have a high-level summary available yet to speak to. Um, that being said, we hope to be able to provide that on our website um, as we get that summary available to us and are able to share it also with the Board of Regents and senior leaders. But at this point, we, we don't have that information and we'll let the community know once that's available and plan to, to make, that, um, make that available at a system level. Great question though. Are there others? Keep them coming. All right, seeing no other questions, Please let us know how we did on the evaluation that will be forthcoming as soon as we close out the webinar. And again, email us with any other questions. Please spend some time on the ee.ltd.umn.edu website. There are videos, there are printable guides um, really intended to walk you through what Marissa covered today. And then, of course, as mentioned, the recording will be posted to the website as, long, as well as with the um, answers from the Q&A that will take us about a week or so, so that will not be immediate. Um, and then also in the module, um, now that you are thinking about the employee engagement module through the lens of having survey data, please again check out that module and the quick guides that are there as well. Uh, thinking about how you can help um, your, your colleagues use those and let us know if there are gaps in those resources um, that would be helpful. As also mentioned, we're going to have uh, additional resources for making um, meaning of the data and then taking action on it that we will um, be rolling out in January as well as including, including in that February 14th uh, webinar. So um, we are aware that not everything that's probably needed is there, but don't hesitate to let us know what, what you're seeing that could be helpful or not seeing that could be helpful to, to provide. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing many of you on February 11th at the HR Leads Plus training and then back again in February, January 11th, and then February 14th. Marissa is telling me to speak in complete sentences, which is always good. Thanks again. Happy holidays, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>